Hey, what's up, gamers? This is Skeleton Mystic. Just, just about everyone who can click a mouse knows Legion is almost upon us, and I thought that it might be a good time now to go over how some of our gold making options are going to be changing when our Legion gets here. I'm going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly of gold making, and I'm going to start with this one the Potion of Luck. In Legion, we are going to lose the effects of the Potion of Luck. It is going to turn from this beautiful little potion right here into this, this monstrosity right here and become essentially useless. So that means that all that beautiful trillium ore and all that beautiful wind wool and all those wonderful things we were enjoying with the potion of luck are going to be gone as bonuses. They, they, don't get me wrong, the items aren't going to be gone. The bonuses for the potion of luck are going to be gone. Now you can still get spirits of harmony and motes of harmony from farming the mogu over there in the Vale. That's no problem, you know, getting that stuff. What's really going to be affected is the acquisition of trillium and by that the acquisition of living steel. Living steel right now is used to make eight different craft and sellable mounts. And I foresee all those mounts going up in price. This is where I'm talking about the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. We're gonna lose our ability to get trillium as easy as we did. I mean, you can still farm it in your gardens in Pandaria and you're still gonna, you can still do hardcore node farming and mining to get trillium. But I think the supply is gonna be thinned out greatly because of not having that potion. In any case, living steel is going to go up in price, and these mounts that are involved with living steel are going to be going up in price. There are eight different mounts, as I said. There's the jeweled panther mounts. There are two rockets, and there is most notably the sky golem. On my server, the sky golem is 25,000 now. If it does anything at all, like the Vial of Sands did at the end of Cataclysm, the price for a sky golem will go up. I would say, there's one now. <laughs> one just flew by. That's pretty handy. I would say the price would go up by a third to maybe a half of what it is now. The Vial of the Sands, whenever it was in Cataclysm and was a regular thing, sold for, I believe it was 40,000 gold, and on my server it's now up to 65,000 gold. Hopefully, the Sky Golem and the other Living Steel related mounts will be doing the same thing. We're going to have to, uh, the law of supply and demand here is going to rule out, it does seem to be. Anyhow, we're going to be losing our easy trillium but we're going to be gaining prices on our crafted mounts. So if you have crafted mounts, by all means, stockpile. Stockpile that living steel like there is no tomorrow, because, well, there isn't, really. If you're a buyer and you're looking for a mount that has living steel involved, if I was you, I would buy it now, because it's going to go up in price. <laughs> Scrimp, save, use the, <laughs> use the guild gold, whatever you got to do, and buy your mounts now. They're going to be going up. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is the... Inscription profession. I'm not quite sure. I, I kind of think this one's going to be bad, but I'm not sure how it's going to work out. They're going to take away all the major glyphs and a lot of the minor glyphs and turn them into toys and accoutrements and whatnot like that. But as a recompense for scribes, they're going to be giving us Vantus runes. Something that pretty much every raider is going to be needing on a regular basis. And I really... Guys, I didn't actually get access to beta, so I didn't really have a chance to playtest how this is going to work out for scribes. And if any of you have done that and would like to share that information, that would be great. I really want to know where the scribes are going. I want to really want to be able to tell people, hey, you know, dump your scribes if, you know, now or, or keep your scribes and improve them because they're going to be better. I would really like to know about this. I'm kind of in the dark as to how good or bad this huge overhaul of scribes is going to be. It does seem to be that the baby profession for Legion, the one that's going to be the little darling, is going to be blacksmithing. They have, as far as I know, the only craftable and sellable mount in the Fell Core Hound. They as well are going to be able to craft these, this item called hoof plates, which is going to increase mount speed by 20%, and I think that rocks. I'm hoping that, that you're going to be able to buy one, and it's going to be good for all your mounts, but if it isn't, that's going to be a huge, huge gold income for blacksmiths because I, I have 160 mounts myself and I know a lot of you have got hundreds and hundreds of mounts. I know I only use a few of them regularly, but well, I'd be greedy and I'd probably put hoof plates on every day. I got them, one of them just to have hoof plates on them if I decided to use them. In any case, if they make hoof plates uh, account wide, then it won't be such a big thing, but if they make them individual mounts, wow, the gold potential is tremendous. Now, all of the other professions, 
are going to have their crafting things and, and, and you know these items and that items and the other items I do believe there's a leather crafted mount too which is I do believe it's it's either bind on pickup or bind to account it's one of the two it's a cool mount but you're not going to be able to sell it and that's what we want we want gold everybody wants the gold anyhow the other thing that the blacksmith is going to be make, able to make is the full laystone crafted gear. Whereas we can only equip three pieces of crafted armor in the, fe in the past, we're now going to be able to equip a full set in the future. This isn't going to be raid quality gear, but it's going to be gear enough to get you into the raids. And that's going to be important. If you can get early on and craft a lot of this stuff, the gold will roll in. The problem is going to be... With the Blood of Sargeras, this is one of the ones that I classify as just plain ugly. Blood of Sargeras is going to be one of the top level crafting materials that we have in Legion. It's going to be like Felblight and Savage Blood are now. The problem is going to be that so far, they've got that stuff set as bind on pickup. So if you have a tune that has two gathering professions, say mining and herbalism, where you're mainly going to be getting that stuff, you won't be able to use it. And if you have a tune that has two crafting professions, say blacksmithing and leatherworking, you won't be able to get any of it. It will be available as well as from profession gathering, it will be available through fishing, and it will be available as, Chris, uh, <laughs> as quest rewards. But I'm not really seeing where that's going to be a lot of it at a time, not nearly as much as being able to gather, you know, go out and gather herbs all day long and pick up a bunch of it that way. To boot, a lot of these recipes are going to take a lot of it to make stuff. So I'm seeing really a pinch with the whole Blood of Sargeras thing unless they decide to get off of that bind on pickup bit and make it a little bit easier for us to get. If you have a tune that has two crafting professions, I would say swap one out if you, if you feel like you can and make one a gatherer and one a crafting. If you have one that has two gathering professions, the same thing. They're going to end up making a cho uh, choke up a bottleneck on this that's just going to be unreal. And that's really the only way I see to get out of that is to swap out some crafting on some tunes. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they come to their senses by live and make that a, a bind to account, or at least a bind to account, if not, you know, a, a BOE map. But I don't think that's going to happen at the beginning at all. I really don't. That is pretty much the worst of it. That's the good and the bad and the ugly as, as I have it at the moment. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give that like button a good hard smash because it's going to help me out. And as well, share this video because people need to be in the know. Until next time, this is Skeletal Mystic reminding you that whatever else you do, always love the game. Peace. Hey, what's up, Mr. Skeletal Mystic? Today I'm going to run you guys through the Skybreaker battle that's in the middle of Ice Crown Citadel. Whenever I first came up here and did this battle, I had no idea what was going on. I, I watched a few guides, but it wasn't really clear. So I'm going to run this battle through for you guys so you can see how to do it quick, efficiently, and not having all the headaches that I have.